My name is Roger Wick, and I'm the Melvin R. Seaton Curator and Department Head of Medieval and Renaissance Manuscripts here at the Morgan Library and Museum. And today I brought in as one of my favorite objects this small prayer book, which is called the Prayer Book of Anne de Bretagne. Anne de Bretagne was not only Queen of France, but she was also Duchess of Brittany, and she was very proud of that. And we know it was she who commissioned this book because that's her. When I came to the Morgan some years ago, this book very much intrigued me because there was a mystery buried inside this book, and it occurs at the end. The very last picture in the book contains a second portrait. Initially, I thought, who might this be? So I investigated the possibilities that it could be either her first husband, Charles VIII, or her second husband, Louis XII. Well, both were dark-haired, rather old, and ugly, and as you can see, this young man is rather handsome, and he's blonde, and he's very young, and so it couldn't be either of her two husbands. So then I investigated her children, and I looked into them, and I discovered, or landed upon, the Dauphin she had, the princeling she had under her first husband, Charles VIII, and I identified that this was a portrait of the Dauphin Charles Orlin. And that also then began to explain certain other somewhat different mysterious elements of this book. The book begins with this prayer, which is the Our Father. Above it, we have a picture of the Trinity. The second prayer on the left is the Hail Mary. And the third prayer, beginning on the right, is the Apostles' Creed. Now, these are three of the most basic Christian prayers in the Middle Ages. But what's very interesting is they hardly ever appear in manuscripts. And that's because every child memorized these prayers as a kid, and so they were usually not written down. And so what this book is, is a very rare kind of book that Anne commissioned to teach the Dauphin, Charles Orlan, his catechism. But I ran into one little snag. Charles Orlan died shortly after his third birthday. And this youth kneeling here is obviously older than three years old. So again, I turned to the book's contents, and what I discovered is that the book actually begins very simply and then becomes more complicated until at the very end it is a prayer to obtain wisdom. And as you can see, looming behind Charles Orlan is an empty throne. So it was thought that the idea behind this book was it once was held in the hands of Anne teaching her child his basic catechism. But then as he grew up to be 12 or 13 years old, he could hold this book in his own hand and he could have read this very prayer to obtain wisdom in order to occupy the throne of France. It will remain empty as far as he was concerned, I'm afraid. The illuminations in this book are by an artist named Jean Poyer, P-O-Y-E-R, and he was working in the French city of Tours in the Loire Valley in the late 15th and early 16th century. And he received commissions from royals such as Anne de Bretagne and her husband, Charles VIII. We know it's him who painted this book because we can compare, for instance, this image of the lamentation from the prayer book to a single leaf in the Free Library of Philadelphia, we can see that they are iconographically related and stylistically very, very close. One of the reasons I chose this manuscript to show was because of this illumination, which shows four angels holding a monstrance with the Eucharist. And to me, it is one of the most beautiful illuminations ever created. <laughs> Poirier really outdoes himself with these soft lilacs and these pinks and these purples. It's almost as if the painting was breathed onto the vellum instead of actually being painted. Here we have a book that was commissioned, yes, by a queen, but she's really acting in her role as a mother. To me, this book speaks of the tender relationship between a mother and her child. 